Hey guys, welcome to the Traditional Bow Hunting Wilderness Podcast. This is Jason Sam Koviak with uh, Traditional Bow Hunting Podcast. I guess that intro was kind of screwed up. But anyway, uh, we're going to walk you through here. I'm getting ready to pack my stuff for my trip to Missouri here. Um, in a starting process of getting these things ready, but I wanted to kind of show you what it takes to pack for an out-of-state hunt, especially packing like I am, which is uh, very, I, I keep a lot of stuff. I'm, I'm going pretty big here. I have this trailer that you see right here that we are going to take behind that. We'll be pulling that behind my diesel. And, uh, but that trailer has been out there with me. I've been using this trailer now for six years. Um, I just brought it up here, just got the hubs uh, lubed and everything like that. Got it made sure the lights are working, it's all set. But a lot of this stuff I keep in here all year round, and I just lock it up. You can see here, uh, this is what it looks like on the inside. That's my wall tent there. That's my camp bin with all my stuff. My pot for boiling antlers, because we can't bring them into here with any brain matter or anything in them, no bones. Um, you know, a couple of the little things I need here, my poles for that, my little heater, these are water jugs right there, my canopy. So I got some things that I keep in here on a regular basis. I just leave in here, uh, cause I'm not worried about mice getting into anything, uh, too bad in here. Cause my wall tent is protected in there. And, uh, if they're going to chew anything, they're probably going to hit that pad first. So I would know it and I've never yet had a problem. So, uh, so I just leave this stuff in here, but like I said, we're in the beginning stages of getting things ready. So it's kind of, uh, still in the process. I'm going to just kind of like said walk you through a little bit of this as a kind of a, a vlog as it's happening kind of deal um here's some of my other stuff that i'm taking that stuff over here is just the stuff that goes in my renegade uh that's my weekly work stuff my albums tripods light stands um you know my rack these are my traction boards that i carry in the winter time or put them in, those are going to go in my truck um but here i have my jet sled I got two stand sets in there, sticks and stands. I got my rubber boots. I got my cooler right here for putting deer and stuff in. Uh, cook kit. These are just some things that I have left out. Two sleeping bags because I don't know which one I want to bring yet. I'll check when the weather. I find out what it's going to do. 20 degree bag and a zero degree bag. I got our two cots down there. And I have the other jet sled right here too that will also end up going with us as well uh, because of the fact that there's going to be me, Joe, and Steve. One jet sled will stay in the back of the truck in case somebody needs it. The other one will stay in camp in case somebody needs one there. Now, as far as clothing go, um, things like that, like I will bring that stove is going to go with me as well too. That's how I boil my antlers and skulls. And uh, again, we cannot bring them into Michigan with any brain matter in them. So uh, by bringing that with me, I will actually, the reason it's still over here is I'm checking with Steve. I think he has one that he's bringing already too for cooking on. And if he is, I'm not bringing it. I'll just bring my pot. But it's important to have something to be able to clear those antlers out. Uh, here is where all the magic happens for me. Uh, this is the reason I have alarms on my garage and all that stuff is this is where I keep all my, my hunting stuff. So as we come up here, oh. I got this whole little room here, which I will turn on a light in a minute, right here. And these, all these bins, every one of these bins that you see are hunting clothes, stuff like that. This side, my wife and my daughters. This side, basically my stuff. So what I do is I come up here, I got all kinds of, you know, spare packs, bags. I got, you know, you name it, it's, it's up here. I got all kinds of stuff. Well, I'm going to take and grab one of these. Uh contain clothing baskets if i get this crap out of the way with one hand spare arrow cases crap like that so there we go so now we got a bin <coughs> i'm going to go through each of these and pick out stuff that i'm going to take with me this bin here is all my socks and my hats and uh miscellaneous stuff this one's all my thermals this one's all my shirts this one's all my pants so i'm going to go through and pick out all the clothing that i'm going to need to grab and have all that stuff with me so we'll be back Okay, clothes are in. Just got my bow tube out of the garage. And uh, we're going to go in here and get the rest of this stuff together. I brought those clothes into the house. They are basically running right there in the wash machine for the last little bit. And like I said, I got the bow tube here. And get just putting everything together in one spot. But like I said, packing for a trip like this where you want a week of pure comfort and be able to do all this kind of stuff and, and live that, you know, live very comfortably, it takes a lot of gear, a lot of garbage that you're putting in there. So here we have the beginning stages of what I'm going to put together. Now, keep in mind that this is my pack I use every day here in Michigan because I'm not packing boning deer out and packing them out. So this is my uh, Kuyu 2300 Venture Pack. All of the stuff that's in there is going to be converted over to my XOK2000 pack. This is the pack that has a frame on it, and I will be using this pack uh, so that I can actually pack deer out with me all in one trip with my sticks and my stands. 
that's my little essentials kit that stays in a truck with spare batteries, spare parts, uh, my uh, Leopold thermal tracker, things that if I need it, they're in that bag. Uh, they will be in there. This is my other pack frame uh, that I use if I don't want to actually have to use that one or if somebody else needs to pack a deer out, they take that Eberly F1 mainframe pack frame stock um, or pack. This Kuyu pack right here is my uh, Icon, Icon Pro 1850 uh, with the suspension system. This one has to go down state with me to bring to Joe because he is going to take that over because my friends are too lazy and all they do is mooch off me and they don't ever buy anything on their own. So he is going to be borrowing that pack for me to use. And uh, the rest of my gear here, like I said, I got stuff in the washer, things getting together here. It's just kind of a catch-all here for, for today while I'm throwing all this stuff together. And then tonight, we will get all these things packed up. Uh, my daughter's leftover clothes from her trip. Her stuff is in the washer being washed. Those are her thermals and things like that and her harness over there in the corner. So uh, it's just a matter now of uh, fine-tuning and putting everything together, which once I get those clothes out of the... Uh, um, out of the wash I will bring you over here and show you what we're putting together somebody online told me it was very important to make a list when you're packing for this stuff so I went ahead and did that for you guys so I have a list right there that is my packing list so I make sure I bring everything forget nothing and make sure I have extras so I have the packing list all set everything is ready and uh, we're going to go ahead and like I said come back when I get those clothes out of the wash and I start piling stuff together in the meantime while we're waiting for that we're going to go to Walmart and start getting some of the food and the stuff I need for that trip so we'll be back Okay, here we go. This is the clothing that I am taking for a week-long day. Actually, I've been gone for a total of eight days. Um, this is a, the clothing I am taking. What we have here, we have my two thermoses that I use for my hot chocolate. They are going to be mandatory that I take those with me because uh, in the cold mornings, I like taking hot chocolate on the stand with me, and those thermoses will let that stuff stay warm for hours. I can get like six, seven hours of hot hot chocolate out of those so those are going with me uh they fit in my pack real well this is a pair of old keens i don't think they make them anymore i don't even know what model they are i've had them for about probably six seven years but they are a 200 gram thinsulate uh version and i absolutely love them and i save those for i do bring them on my missouri and my kansas trips and stuff like that so i have those i will be wearing my pittsburgh soft toes out there so i will have those as well and then my keen summit backcountry twos here we have my uh shampoos those are earbuds inside that bare aspirin container those are earplugs uh because again people snore in camp so uh but my deodorant toothpaste shampoos i have two pairs of regular just uh wrangler type uh cargo pants that i really like so i have those um, I have a set of thermals right there. You'll see a lot of thermals because those are my main source of insulation. So I got a uh, top and bottom of Rocky thermals, an insulated waterproof pair of old Cabela's pants. Um, I like them because they are kind of insulated, windproof and everything there too. So they are nice to have as an option. Um, and then over here we have just a very old redhead uh, flannel shirt, a newer Carhartt flannel shirt, uh, two hats, my two two Columbia Ascender jackets, the gray and the light brown. I have both of those going with me. And the reason I'm taking both is because there's no reason not to. I have a trailer, so I have plenty of room to put this stuff in a duffel bag. And if I'm out there and I get this one soaking wet and I don't want to dry it out or deal with it, um, or for whatever reason I get it dirty or something as far as smelly or some reason I don't want to wear it, I have that one. It's just real easy. Uh, same with wearing, I have two uh, Northern Mist uh, hoodie sweatshirts going with me. Uh, same reason. I probably will only wear one. I probably won't wear, I'll only wear a third of this stuff that I'm taking, most likely. But by having, there's no reason not to have it. And then it's already pre-packed for when I get back and I got to head to Kansas here in a you know, week and a half after I get back. So um, so I don't mind taking it. But then we got uh, two stocking hats, my belt, my compass stays connected to it. A few pairs of socks right here. Um, the, another set of thermals right here, just a fleece top and a thick thermal bottom. Another set of, set of thermals right there, just one of my favorite turtleneck type shirts. I don't usually wear turtlenecks, but I like that one. I actually will wear that alone. If it's a 60 degree day, I'll wear only that shirt with a t-shirt under it. So um, that's what I bring it for. It's just for the hot weather days. Two of these hats. Again, if I sweat one up real bad and I don't want to mess with it, I just swap out to the other one. Sweet and easy. Um, I have my Kuyu vest. It stays in my backpack all the time that I wear every single time. This right here is my rain gear set. My outdoor research hat, my 
Kuyu Chew Catch jacket and my First Light Boundary Storm Tight rain pants, what I'm bringing. Um, I love that setup. I, again, I'll actually, if you want, I'll put some links to some of this stuff below for you here. Um, I've talked about it in many other videos, so none of this stuff is new for you. But if you're, if this is turning your crank on this and you're interested in some, I'll put it down there for you. Um, and then this, this is a pile of skibbies. Those are my underwear. Yes, I'm bringing seven. Um, there's no reason for me to have to wash them if I don't need to. Um, if I want to, I can in a jet sled. But if I don't want to, I have clean ones right there. And I don't have to be turning them inside out and swip, swapping holes and doing stuff with them to make them clean. I have them. They don't take up much space. Seven pairs of socks as well. Seven cotton t-shirts. You guys have heard me say in my podcast, and I wasn't lying to you when I do. I tell you this all the time. I don't care how cold it is. I don't care where I'm hunting. I don't care what I'm doing. Cotton underwear. Cotton socks, cotton t-shirt. That is my main first layer on me. People argue all the time, oh my God, that's the dumbest thing you could do. It's what I do. You do what you want. You follow your own rules. You whatever you want to. I will be in cotton underwear, cotton socks, and cotton t-shirts, and then using this stuff in conjunction too. But if you notice in here, uh, there's only two things of camouflage, really. One is my vest right here. The other one is a chew catch jacket because they did not make it in a solid color when I bought it. And then that pair of pants, which is actually I had since like uh, 1999. They don't even make those anymore. I have another pair still with the tags on it. I love that pair of pants for very specific uh, situations like 40 mile an hour winds, brutal cold. I will put those pants on with a pair of thermals and I will also put those rain pants over them and I am I, no wind can get to me. It's, it's awesome. So I bring those for special occasions. So that's kind of my clothing list. It's going to end up going with me here on this trip. Um, uh, and then we're going to go ahead now. I got all that stuff organized. I'm going to go ahead, get stuff bagged up, boxed up, and put into this duffel bag and everything put together. And then we'll move on from there. All right, there you go. You can see it. That was everything that was laying right here. Oh, with the exception of my two thermoses. We need to have them get in there. Boots we'll put in separate, but those need to go in. Now with those in, that is everything. I just zipped that bag up. We're ready to go. Notice I do not have any Ziploc bags in there or anything like that. I did use one kind of like this, one of the bigger just uh, Ziploc bags to put all of my thermals, my socks, my underwear, and my t-shirts that were all, all that stuff I put in my, all that base layer kind of stuff I put in one bag in there, and the reason for it is that way it kept it organized. I don't have to chase socks around in this bag and everything like that, because I have to get into that bag every single day for new stuff. So that bag is down there on the bottom um, with that stuff in there, but everything else just thrown in loose. I'm not worried about scent control, not worried about any of that stuff, just packing it up. There it is, ready to go. The vest and that hat are going to go into my pack. When I build my pack, they stay with that. So those I don't need to have with me, everything else set in there and ready. All right, there's my arrow case all set up to go. Basically, I'm bringing a dozen broadheads, two judos up there, dozen broadheaded arrows. Um, I got a lot of extra stuff in here. I got 60, uh, 60 inch strings for my backup Berga, my Northern Mist Berga that'll go, 64 inch strings for my classic that I'll be shooting, my field sharpening kit right in here with file, stone, and stropping leather arm guard, uh, my bow square that's here, a couple of spare straps for my Great Northern Quiver in case one were to break, spare tab in there redundancy i guess that's my stropping uh piece of blue jean for my kid i got a bunch of little stuff in here too super glue knock pliers uh, a couple piggybackers buried in there uh judos you know knocks i got knocks floating around everywhere in here uh my little arrow kit which has got more glue in it knocks uh inserts uh string knocks all kinds of stuff um extra bow hook in here i don't know why just stuff that's always been in here another what do i got in here uh one, two, three, four extra broadheads taped up in there. Uh, so a little bit of everything, just kind of a hodgepodge of stuff. Those pieces of rubber bands that you see floating around everywhere in here, they go between. So I set them on here, and then I push the arrow down in there, and that keeps them from moving back and forth so the shaft doesn't slide. You can see it here. So that shaft doesn't slide back and forth. So if we hit the brakes hard in the truck or this gets thrown around, my arrows are not sliding back and forth, and these broadheads are not chewing off feathers as they move back and forth. So that's what those are for. I just take that piece of big rubber band stuff them right in there with the arrow shaft um, I put the shaft down and push into them and it keeps those arrows from moving back and forth uh, again keep in mind this arrow case is probably 20 21 years old so it's a little more wore out than most of the new ones the new ones probably hold better I'm um, just too uh, cheap to buy a new one and I really like this one so that basically is my arrow case that I will be taking with me and what I have in it now keep in mind I do also have in here, I will have set up. I'm going to take my uh, my Barriga bow. It's going to be in here, and so will this one. When I'm done, I still got a couple more days before I leave, so I will be shooting a lot still. But I will have uh, five broadheads on here. Um, I will have five broadheads and a judo on here. Uh, this broadhead will mount with my piggybacker, like it always does, right on the side. 
Uh, it'll go right into there and it'll sit right here, right into that spot in mount right there like that with that piggybacker. Uh, that one I got to resharpen up and touch up because I just pulled it out of the case. Um, but yeah, basically that'll be my, uh, my arrow setup that I'm taking. All right, we got our two broadheads that we had to sharpen. Those are razor sharp and touched up. My knife is touched up, sharpening stuff there. And I'm eating some pulled bear roast and a little bit of macaroni and cheese while I'm doing it. And Riley's helping me out. So uh, heads are now set. Knife is sharp. Everything is all ready to go. All right, we got the stuff ready for the backpack here. It all came out of my Kuyu Venture 2300 pack, and it is all going to go into my XOK 2000 pack. This is what I'm taking on this trip as far as my regular pack stuff. I do not have my survival kit in here because where I'm going to be at, Missouri, I don't have more than a mile, mile and a half in any direction where I hit a road and hit houses and things like that. So um, I'm not too worried about the survival stuff, so I'm leaving that pack out. Um, but I do have my vest, got a neck warmer, winter hat for cold days and my hat that I bring with me all the time. I have my harness right there, lineman belts right there, two pairs of gloves because um, I do get when I get one wet I want a dry set. So I bring two pairs of just regular jersey gloves. I have my Eagle Tac, uh, the tw uh, two cell Eagle Tac flashlight, another Azula knife. I have my uh, milkweed wind detector, my Phoenix headlamp, arm guard, and uh, my haul line, my tags and stuff will be in there, water bottle I always carry, a little bit of duct tape, and uh, two hand warmers. I keep them in there just in case I do get cold in the mornings. I can throw one in my pocket. And I have my uh, lighter. I always carry lighters. There's actually four lighters throughout these kits. Uh, my saw, two bow hooks, and uh, my little tripod that I use for my phone and recording a lot of this stuff. My binoculars, my extra straps for bigger dimer trees. My little plastic cover that I use for uh, my seat if it's raining or over my pack or anything like that that I want to do. This is my basically like my kill kit. I got my Havilon knife in there, extra blades, rubber gloves, and um, no, I lied. I'm sorry. That's not that is actually just my spare parts kit right here. I'm coming closer to it here, but this is all my spare parts, uh, extra tabs, super glue, couple extra batteries, little bitty things, another compass, stuff like that, and that one. Uh, this is a couple bright eyes in case I need to mark something. Another lighter here, toilet paper. This is actually my kit with my Havilon knife in there. Extra blades, rubber gloves, and a couple wet ones in there. Spare rope right there in case I got to tie something up, especially with me um, packing meat out on there. It's nice to have a little extra rope in there or if I need it for an extra haul line. I have my Jeep, my Garmin GPS. That is just a big pop-out orange towel. It's a huge orange towel. And the reason I bring it is if I'm packing meat out with antlers... <clears throat> and I have that head attached on this pack. I'm on public land. I want to wrap that around there. It's nice and lightweight. Doesn't take up much space. Real little and compact. But I can wrap that around the head and the antler so that nobody shoots me while we're coming out of there. This is my game bags and a two game bags and a garbage bag inside of there. A little thin garbage bag. I put the meat in the game bags. And then the game bags go in the garbage bag in there just to keep the blood and crap off my pack and keep it nice and simple. The bag, the garbage bag is only while I transport it out of the woods. As soon as I get it back to my truck, they come out of the garbage bag. Never leave your meat in the actual garbage bag. It's not good for it. It um, doesn't get any airflow, and it'll, it'll go bad on you. But that's just to transport while it's in my pack. I have zip ties right there for putting tags on and many other uses. They come in very handy, so I always carry a few of them. Quick clot sponge, just because, never know, I always like to have that in my pack a couple of beef jerkies just in case i uh, want something to snack on while i'm up there so that's basically my kit i got some toilet paper right there so uh just a sweet simple little setup nothing crazy not a lot um doesn't have much weight to it but this is the main essential items uh that i will fit in here now the other than my harness being in the main compartment with my binoculars everything else basically fits in the lid and in the little pockets and things like that leaving the whole entire pack open uh for all my extra clothes and that sort of stuff so uh works out really good but that's uh what we're going to put into that xo k2000 pack right now and then have that pack all set up and ready for my trip all right, we are starting to get uh, stuff all packed up here and ready to roll. This is my cooler setup. As you can see, I have the pink foam in there. There's some on the bottom all the way around, and then this is the lid that goes on it. And uh, this thing here, as I showed in videos, will keep stuff colder than any Yeti, anything you could ever dream of. Nothing can come close to what this cooler is capable of um, as far as that stuff. And uh, the water bottles, I don't use any ice. I use these water bottles. I freeze them. I buy two cases of these. I freeze them in my chest freezer um, for about three days and then I put them in here and what's nice is they don't get any water in here anywhere there's really barely any water that you know where you get with ice melt but also I can take these out and I can have them to drink if it's hot out 
then I take them froze in the morning right out of this like this and put a couple of them right in my backpack and they thaw out through the day and stay cold. If it's cold like it's going to be when we're down here this time, I'll take them out the night before uh, and bring them in a, in a tent with me so they can actually thaw out and they'll be ready for uh, cold drinking water then too. But I don't bring a lot of cold or a lot of frozen foods or cold foods that I need. The whole middle of that is cold foods, um, but I don't need a lot. And then as we kill deer... What happens is once I get a deer down, if I need to put them in a the freezer, with the temperatures now, I probably don't even need to. But if I do, I can pull these pink foam, the bottom one, and these out real quick in about five minutes. And then I can put those deer, um, those boned out uh, deer bags, game bags of deer meat in here um, with those water bottles to keep them cold. And it works fantastic. Just an awesome system. There it is, all ready to be closed up. Now there's one thing missing from this, which I will show you in a second here. But basically just stick that right in there like that. Close her up, and she's done. There's a the cooler. Now, your eggs. I love hard-boiled eggs. These are hard-boiled eggs in here. They are already shelled and ready to roll. Do not put your eggs in your cooler with your frozen stuff. They will freeze solid, and they taste like crap and are a pain in the butt. So the eggs stay out. It is going to be, you know, in the 30s and 40s while I'm driving down here, they're going to be just fine to just sit back here in a trailer someplace and be completely content. So just something to think about. If you put them in the freezer and they freeze, they're going to taste like garbage. All right, we pretty much got the camp stuff here. So we have my jet sled right there set up. I got my two stands in there, a couple little things we need, boots. But I got two stand rigs, my sleeping bag, our uh, pack or our frame pack for packing, a couple uh, ther or, uh, thermal barriers to, you know, sleeping pads to use under our things, spare tire, a couple chairs, a few tables, two cots, cooler, tent. That white bucket's all my, uh, my connections and fittings for the tent. Uh, got my uh, pop-up canopy right here that we put in front cooler full of food ready for your animals water and water um we can use these for washing for showers for stuff like that we take showers right in jet sled got the stove back there all the accessories i need uh this is my dry food mostly what we eat when we're there is dry because it's quick and easy uh, i know it's not the most glamorous thing but raviolis macaroni and cheeses um you know uh, pastas just quick simple stuff i do got a couple packs of steaks in there and some other things for some stuff but very very light duty when it comes to that um this is a box of fat wood fat wood's great for the fire Make fantastic, quick, easy when you get back to camp. And uh, my eggs right there where they're supposed to be. A couple bottles of water that are not frozen. And uh, we got all the essentials we need. Split them all for the firewood. Axes, hammers, saws if we need it. Hacksaw for uh, cutting antlers off, things like that. So this is basically, this is camp. Okay, now all I really got to do now is add in my duffel bag in here and my uh, my two bows and my arrow case. And for the most part, uh, we're basically ready to roll. Now, all this extra space here is because when I pick up Joe, Joe is going to have a cooler like that. It's going to go on top of that one. He's going to have another bin like this. Joe uses big tubs like this one, my wall tents in, to keep all of his clothes and everything in. So he travels with one big bin like that, airtight bin. That bin will slide right up into this spot as well, too. Then this will tip down on it. And uh, his and everything will fit in here so as you can see a ton of room you know you don't take up a lot i mean this is a uh, 10 by uh, 5 by 10 trailer and uh, there's a ton of room in here i mean basically all we did was just lay down stuff on the bottom i mean this is really about the size of a big pickup truck bed so there's a lot of room left so you don't need a lot of stuff but that's it we're basically pretty much uh, packed up got to throw the rest of the few things in here and uh i got to get my hitch right there put on the truck get things loaded up and ready to roll all right, guys. Well, there it is. All ready to go. Truck set. Everything's ready. Trailer set. Only thing I gotta do is throw my duffel bag and my bow in there, and uh, we are off and ready to roll and heading to Missouri. We gotta stop at my buddy Barry's and pick up my uh, my buddy Joe. We're gonna leave his truck there, and because uh, it's kind of a halfway point for us there in Michigan before we cut across, so we're gonna meet at my buddy Barry's tonight and drop his truck off, pick up Joe, throw Joe's stuff in the trailer, throw the rest of his gear in the truck, and uh, we are all set and ready to go. Did I mention how much I love this hitch? This adjustable drop hitch right there. Um, I put a link to it on Amazon. Maybe I'll put a link. I did it in my uh, my truck video. And I'll also probably do it here for you too. But that thing right there is amazing with the flexibility and adjustability you get. So I can use it for my bow fishing boats, all three of my different trailers. And I can make that level out perfect. Uh, it's first time pulling this trailer with it. So I'm guessing based on the fact that the front end is off the pavement. That I'm figuring I'm going to actually end up being about perfectly level when I get rolling. But if I need to, I can quickly change that in about five seconds right right on the road so we'll see what happens but we are going to be off here in about an hour heading out ready to roll 
All right, we are rolling. We are on our way to Missouri, and uh, we got uh, it's about uh, two o'clock in the morning. Listening to Primitive Pursuit podcast, talking to Bob over at, uh, at Ace Archery Tackle. Great episode. Catching up on some of my podcasts, and uh, we got about uh, four hours left to go. Got Joe over here sleeping, doing what he always does while I'm driving. He's out like a light over there, and uh, yep, we're just making it happen, making a drive. And well, there it is. This is the final part of that video for you, but kind of shows you packing for that. There's our setup right there. My Davis 12 by 4 or 12 by uh, 12 by 14. Yeah, I don't, uh, yeah, 12 by 14, I think is what it is. 12 by 14 wall tent and a 12 foot canopy on there. Nice little setup in there. Trailer right there. So we got all of our stuff. We can still lock that stuff up in there. Spare bows, things like that can all be locked. Food can be left in there so critters aren't getting into it. Uh, nice little setup right here. We are still setting up, obviously, still putting things together. Joe's working right there on his pack, but we got cots in, set, stove set, firewood set, because it's going to be a very cold week here. We got uh, snow coming in, six inches of snow they're calling for here. So, uh, but yep, all set up, all ready to roll. Uh, like I said, we we haven't got everything all finalized yet. We just walked in, but we are in process of making it all come together and uh, getting it built. Over there is Steve Ture from Northern Mist. There's his uh, very humble uh, little uh, mode there, his little wall tent here he brought. Normally, he is set up right over here, and he's got you know a, a tent twice the size of ours, and he's got cook sh stations and all that because he's usually hosting people for his uh, you know for his Northern Mist Longbow Rendezvous. This year he came down by himself, so sweet, simple, and uh you know very easy little setup there so uh but this is camp for us this is where we're gonna be at for the next week uh everything's all set all ready to go and uh now we just gotta do some fine tuning put some stuff away change clothes and we're gonna head out in the woods so thanks for watching i'll be back with more stuff soon talk to you later bye